so I'm Ronin. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce my last name. I don't know if my parents even know. <laughs> um, so I'm the director of marketing, meaning I'm in charge on marketing operations, partially sales, sales operations and demand generation. Um, and I'm Claire, so I manage our marketing programs, our online programs. Uh, so just to understand the audience, how many marketing ops people in the room? Okay, sales ops, campaign managers. Just me, cool. Okay, cool. So yeah, we try to make the slides fit to the different audiences. So yeah, feel free to stop us and ask uh, if you have any questions. One comment is, do you guys know how many tools exist for marketing and sales today in the market? Ballpark? Hundred. Close? A thousand. A little bit more. <laughs> so serious decision study showed 1900 tools. And um, I think that the presenter from Influity was talking about 40 or 50 tools that this team uses. Um, and if we go back to sports, we don't have a lot of sports ana analogies, so sorry about that. But I think, you know, like in sports, you need to choose who is your starting lineup. And um, I'm going to talk later a little, bit, a little bit about how to scale people and scale software. But you need to make sure that you have the right system and only the absolute system that's going to bring you to success. For us, it's our marketing automation, Salesforce and full circle. So we're going to walk you through the, the job bite story and how we leverage um, full circle to win some prizes, um, align marketing and sales. But first, let's talk about job bite a little bit. Sure. So Jobvite uh, is the leading recruiting software platform. So this is kind of how we, uh, this is kind of how we frame recruiting to our prospects. Our prospects are recruiters, CHROs. As we're moving up market, it's widening to the executive team. So we're talking to CTOs, CROs, VP of sales, those people. But our our core are the recruiters and HR managers who are using our software. Um, so this is how we see their funnel, starting off with branding and sourcing um, activities similar to ours. Candidate experience and selection is similar to our nurturing and prospecting and leading into insights um, using recruiting type tools like Full Circle, um, analogous systems. Um, so these are some of our customers. As you can see, being a B2B SaaS company, we that's kind of our core, but we also we work with a lot of tech companies, um, a lot of finance, kind of throughout the spectrum of small to large companies worldwide. Yeah, we have um, three different sales teams, SMB, mid-market, and enterprise. We have a renewal team, inbound LDR team, outbound LDR team. Um, so different sales cycle, different ASPs. Um, yeah, ho hopefully you guys um, resonate with some of this information. So for today's, today's presentation, we're going very chronologically. Starting off in 2013, where we started using Full Circle. Um, 2014, raising our series um, C and then D. Um, and then 2015 is where the majority of our presentation is going to be on um, the year of scaling. So talking about our challenges, our solutions, and the results. And then we'll spend a little bit of time talking about 2016, what we have planned for the rest of the year. So I started in 2013 at Jobvite, and I started participating in different front office with executive uh, meetings. And a very strange thing happened. I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. Um, uh, with that scenario, every exec, every department would carry their own spreadsheet to the room. And we were just talking about different goals, different targets, different conversion rates, and we, we couldn't agree on the numbers. Um, so I really believe that, you know, if you can't measure something, you shouldn't do it, and you probably can, can't manage it. So for me, it was really important to make sure everybody aligned. And in order to do that, I want to have one source of truth. So we implemented full circle and we made Salesforce as our own source of truth. And then we kind of eliminated the awkwardness in the room. We implemented full circle. Now everybody look at the same dashboard. Every, everybody look at the same report and everybody aligned on the targets. 2014, um, again, I'm going through this qu quickly because I want to focus mostly on 2015 and 2016. So 2014, after we implemented um, full circle, uh, our, our CEO came to us and said, we want to raise money. And this is the amount of money that we need to raise. And this, these are the booking targets. 
So we spent 2014 making sure that we have the definition and we're able to track the volume of leads, the volume of inquiries, marketing qualified, sales accepted leads, putting the SAL, SLAs in place. And then we, I'm sure you guys are familiar with this, and if no, I can, I can answer questions later. We did a reverse funnel. So if we know the booking target and we know the conversion rates from bottom, from top to bottom, then we can calculate the cost per one lead and how much cost per, per one opportunity or how much is the cost for one deal. And then basically um, explain how we can scale the marketing engine and get the money that we wanted in order to reach to the booking um, goals and eventually raise the money. So recap of 2013 and 2014, we implemented full circle. We, al we were aligned on S SLAs um, with sales. We defined every stage of the funnel and we start measuring everything. These are examples for SLA dashboard between marketing and sales. Uh, from Salesforce using Full Circle, and on the on the left side or the right side, if you look from here, um, it's the sales and marketing funnel in Salesforce. So some of the results: we raised the money, we saw improvement in inquiry to win in 0.77 percent, which means when I started, we weren't be able to understand how many leads we need in order to get one deal, <coughs> and we got to a point where we need 100 inquiries on top in order to get one deal. Uh, which is aligning the serious decisions uh, benchmark. Uh, we improved alignment with sales and um, we basically increased 10% of sales accepted leads, which, is, which was approved for, for better alignment. And with the full circle data, we were able to um, accurately forecast both pipeline and booking, bookings. So in 2015, um, we had the money, but now we needed to scale. Um, and so our first challenge was on building and moving up market, not necessarily with the historical data. So obviously we had had success in mid-market and enterprise deals and in those segments, um, but our base where Jawbyte started and where we'd had the most success was an SMB. So we were building off of that and we knew it wasn't just a matter of we had more money, let's spend more money in exactly the same places in exactly the same ways, um, but using that our, as our base to grow off of it. So yeah, so I guess, you know, we raised the money and it's kind of a good thing, but now the board comes and completely change the strategy. Now you need to go after mid-market and enterprise companies, but you don't really have the data. So you kind of start everything all over again. So the first thing we did, we got the benchmarks from serious decisions. Um, and we asked them, okay, companies in our size with our revenue goals that sell to these markets, what are their benchmarks for the funnels? We got these numbers from them. Then we identified some mid-market and enterprise deals um, in our current um, Salesforce data. And with full circle, we were be able to do something called reverse deal engineers in order to find all the different touch points for marketing and sales. So, you know, some people thought, okay, from an opportunity to close, it takes us three months to bring a deal. But, but the first touch, the inquiry to an opportunity can be a year or a year and a half. So this is obviously completely changes the strategy. Um, and then, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with John Miller, but uh, he co-founded Marketo, and he has a good article about POI. So the marketing team at Jobbyte measured um, by the pipeline that we create. So instead of ROI, we measure POI. So if our close rate is 4X, we want to generate pipeline for marketing between eight to 12X. And if we don't do that, then we, we shift the, the focus or adjust the, the programs that don't work. So this is an, one example for a dashboard using the, the full circle influence that shows a channel and the POI on that specific channel in a specific uh, time frame. So our second challenge was on the scalability and the, the efficiency um, of that scale. So some of the ways that we did that um, were through the funnel conversion reports by channel. So as a campaign manager, I can see these are the different campaign types that we have. I can follow along with the funnel and see the direct influence um, that each of my different campaigns and campaign types are having. I can also use it just as diagnostics kind of um, check-ins. In um, so Ronan and I have a bi-weekly inquiry meeting where we just go through all the inquiries that are coming in, make sure they're aligned with our velocity, making sure that we're tracking to our goals for the quarter for the year. Um, by campaigns. We also have our POI influence channel, um, POI influence reports by channel, so that I'm able to see um, the amount of pipeline that's being created um, and how all those different campaigns are influencing, um, influencing opportunities. 
So in, in the monthly meetings and by weekly meetings, every campaign manager needs to come to the room and explain the direct conversion for his campaigns and also the influence on pipe. And sometimes you don't see necessary direct conversion, but you do see an influence on pipeline. Um, the cool thing about this is that we can make changes real time. So for example, if we know that we have a certain booking goals for SMB and we need to generate in a quarter, let's say 5,000 inquiries for the SMB and we fall in short, then we can make adjustment based on the data real live and change the campaign investment to other campaigns to bring more SMB deals. So challenge three was managing our stakeholders. So we had one source of truth, um, but everyone has the same report or has the same information, but they obviously need different dashboards, different reports. Um, so that was our next challenge in 2015. So we customized everything. Um, and just as a background as from, from me, and since I'm the only campaign manager in here, maybe you can bring this insight um, to your team. I'm not a data person. Um, my background is Marcom. I was writing emails, I was writing eBooks. Um, so coming into Jobbyte where we had full circle implemented, having this power to create reports when my um, familiarity with Excel is summations, um, was really awesome and really amazing. And it's something that's really empowering to your campaign managers where they're not just going to you for everything. Now I have the ability and your team members have the ability to look at the funnel reports, to look at the influence reports and have that um, for themselves to help you, help you, help me, help you. Um, so yeah, so we have them, the customized reports and dashboards for campaign managers, CMOs, and C-level execs. And we'll go through each one of those. So starting with the campaign managers, um, similar reports to what I'm talking about before. Um, but so one thing we saw um, as Javite, our main audience are recruiters. So LinkedIn is a great source for us um, of people. That's where your recruiters at your companies live and breathe. So LinkedIn offers a lot of different advertising campaigns and opportunities for us to find those recruiters. Um, and what we were seeing with uh, our campaign manager who manages that vendor that they were bringing in a ton of different, there are different campaigns, and one of them was bringing in a huge number of inquiries. We were seeing them go through the funnel really well, but then when we actually looked at the pipeline creation and the POI on them, we saw that a completely different LinkedIn campaign was causing um, more opportunities to be, be created and a larger MRR, ARR. Um, so mid-quarter, I was able to look at that, or the team was, and we were able to readjust our budgets, readjust our time and investment, and refigure everything um, for yeah. success. I think it's, it's also cool because when we sit with vendors in the room, they provide their own data, but we have full circle, so we provide the data, the actual data that we have. So, the conversa so with LinkedIn, we do retargeting and we do display ads. Um, so they came to us and said, oh my God, you guys have the highest number of conversion um, compared to all our clients. So we came with this report and we showed, but you know, nothing ends up contributing to pipeline. So then they shifted the conversation and said, well, you should double the investment because you don't understand there is a branding aspect for retargeting. Uh, well, I said, well, I'm you know, managing the dimension team, not the branding co and communication team. So you guys can talk to them. They have a separate budget and you, know, you can work on campaigns with them. But it's really empower us to also work you know, with, with obviously our execs internally, but also with our different vendors. Um, so this is an example for dashboard for the CMO. So, you know, he wants to know high level what's working by channel. Um, so he can go to this dashboard anytime you want, see direct conversion and pipeline reinvestment. Uh, for the CRO, head of sales, we have different layers. We have um, CRO, VP of sales, head of um, enterprise east, head of enterprise west. So what we created with full circle, we basically slice and dice the funnel by territory. So each sales management understands what's going on um, in every specific territory from you know, qualified lead to opportunity. Um, we also build individual web sales funnels with a, with a full circle data, which is pretty cool. So you know, every web has different conversion, different sales cycle, different ASP. Um, so now at any, any moment of the quarter, they can look at their own data and understand where they are. And is it a marketing problem that they don't get enough leads? Is it a problem with the territory? Is the conversion too low or too high? Um, so this was a big win for us in terms of alignment with sales. And the CFO dashboard. So this is just kind of an Excel example, example for the reverse funnel. So every year when we ask the CFO for budget, uh, we export all the data. Um, 
you know, we plug in the booking targets and all the conversion rates from, um, from full circle. We calculate the cost per inquiry and we show them how much money we, we need in order to hit these goals. Uh, we, in the last three years, we were five to 10% accurate to, to the amount of money that we asked and the, and the, the number of uh, pipeline that we generated. So again, very powerful. So 2015, these are some of our results. Starting off with, um, we won the Forrester Wave, which we're really excited about. Um, our PR team was super psyched. It's on all of our collateral, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, so we, but numbers wise, we also saw 40% year over year bookings, 32% year over year um, pipeline growth, increase in inquiry to one and sales accepted leads. Yeah, some of the things that we think about for uh, 2016. So everybody is talking about alignment and marketing and sales alignment, I think you know, the technology is more complex today. And especially if you go up market, the sales cycle, there are more people and more personas that involved. So for me, one of the challenges is internal communication and education. So how we make sure that the, the sales engineers are on board and the product team is on board and the marketing communication team is on board. So I see some challenges there. It's not only marketing and sales, there are more pieces um, to the puzzle and more people that involved in, in the sales cycle. Um, scaling people, tools and processes. So I touched this um, at the beginning, so again, 2015, we got a lot of money. We start doubling marketing, doubling sales. We start buying every tool that's out there in the market. You need to operate these tools, right? These tools are not going to close deals for you. So I don't think the tools are going to replace, you know, the people and the alignment and all of that. So again, I believe, think about what are the players that you want to go to the battlefield with, right? So make sure that you have the, the minimum tools that you can get the most out of. So for us, again, we have, you know, about, I want to say eight tools total, but the core is Salesforce, marketing automation, we use Marketo and full circle. Um, and yeah, so on the internal communications, something that we've realized um, is just the number of people that are in the sales process is not, you know, rocket science or anything, but as we're moving up market sales consultants, or um, sales engineers are getting more involved in the process and they're communicating our brand and our and our functionality so much more than they were um, when in smaller deals and faster deals and making sure that they know how we'd like to perceive the brand and how they're their how how they're portraying the brand um, and the processes there um, another thing is just within the marketing team itself so Every week, we on the demand gen team, we meet with the Marcom team and the creative team to make sure that we're building the right content for our prospects and everything. And our director of Marcom was really excited about this great infographic. Um, and she was saying how successful it was. It was so amazing. It was great. And I was able to actually look at our influence and our, our funnel metrics and, you know, success. It wasn't success to me. Um, and I said it very politely, um, but we had different definitions of success and it's important to make sure that you guys are speaking on the same terms, not just with sales, but internally within marketing. Um, and you know, infographics are awesome, but they come from a different budget or they have different resources, or maybe I need to use them differently so that they are successful within demand gen, but it just starts a conversation that we wouldn't have had otherwise. Yeah, and like one more bullet point is account based. Everybody's talking about it. I also believe that, you know, it's a term that were that used to be exist in the past and it's just kind of a buzzword, but still, um, you know, we have more targeted enterprise accounts, meaning less leads, meaning the data and the benchmark and the conversion conversion looks a little bit different. So I, th I see a challenge there to understand exactly what are the conversion compared to kind of our, our entire, our, our entire sales team and predictive and machine learning. We have, um, some data scientists um, at Jobvite, and we're just uh, trying to be more predictive. We have um, an upsell and churn machine learning algorithm that we can predict customers that at risk. Uh, we use Infer for predictive lead scoring, and I just anticipated more um, predictive and statistical work in the marketing team in the next year. That's it.